Prepare to read. Soccer shootout. Notice and note. Contrasts and contradictions. Genre focus. Realistic fiction tells a story about characters and events that are like those in real life. Authors of realistic fiction tell the story through the plot, the main events of the story. Realistic fiction includes characters who act, think, and speak like real people. Realistic fiction includes dialogue and informal language to make the conversations seem real. Some realistic fiction includes a theme or lesson set a purpose. Soccer Shootout by Jake Maddox Illustrated by Matthew Shipley After helping to win their school's first ever state soccer championship against the Cosmos, Peter and Burke are looking forward to another soccer season. At spring tryouts, both boys are working hard to practice their skills. Peter is a star forward. Burke is the goalkeeper who had saved the day in the state championship. Peter tells Burke that he heard there is a new student at school who will also be trying out for goalkeeper. Burke meets the new boy, Ryan, who is very confident. Burke is worried and a little apprehensive going into tryouts. Tryouts. It didn't take long for the differences between Burke and Ryan to become clear during tryouts. As they worked on various drills, Burke was clearly better at many of the technical parts of the game. He made good decisions on when to come out of the goal to challenge a shooter or to pick up a loose ball. He always seemed to be in the right place at the right time. When shots were taken on him, Burke made solid saves and controlled the rebounds. Ryan was a little wilder in the goal. He took unnecessary chances coming out of the net to challenge a player when it would have been smarter to stay back. He often found himself out of place. Apprehensive If you are apprehensive, you are worried something bad might happen. Technical The technical parts of a sport are the basic skills and understandings that are needed to play. But Ryan was a better athlete than Burke so he often covered his own fundamental mistakes by making spectacular diving saves. On the second-to-last day of tryouts, Coach Davis broke the Titans into two teams for a scrimmage. The teams were pretty evenly matched. Burke was in one goal, Ryan was in the other. Peter was on Burke's team. Before the scrimmage, Peter ran up to Burke. Don't worry, buddy, he said. I'll score on him and then you'll have the keeper job. At first, the scrimmage was going just as the drills had gone. Burke was always in the right place. When any shots were taken at him, Burke was ready, so the saves were pretty easy to make. Ryan was running all over the field. At one point, he charged a forward who had the ball in the corner. That left the whole goal wide open, so the forward lofted a pass toward Peter. Peter met the pass in the penalty area. He controlled the ball with his left foot, then blasted it with his right toward the open net. But Ryan's quickness allowed him to get back to the net. He dove across to his right and deflected Peter's pass toward the right post. Another forward pulled the rebound in on the right side of the net. Again, Ryan charged, and the forward put the ball out front. This time, Peter tried to redirect the ball toward the left post. He didn't aim it perfectly, and Ryan dove back on top of the loose ball. Burke's heart sank. He knew that if the same play had happened to him, neither of those shots would have been taken. He would have stopped the first pass, and the play would have been over. But Ryan's wild style allowed him to make two spectacular-looking saves. Even Coach Davis was clapping and yelling. Neither team scored in the scrimmage. Afterward, Coach Davis called Burke over to the sideline. Burke, he said. I have an idea. Idea? Burke wasn't sure what to say. Then the coach continued. Have you ever thought about playing another position? Deflected. If you deflected something that was moving, you made it go in a different direction. New position? Burke decided to be honest with his coach. Um... No, coach, he said. I've always wanted to be a goalkeeper. Coach Davis put his arm around Burke's shoulder. Well, you have such great footwork, and you're always in the right place at the right time, Coach Davis said. I think you might make for a great sweeper. The sweeper plays right in front of the keeper. 
he is often the keeper's most trusted teammate. The sweeper helps protect the goalkeeper and clears away loose balls in front of the net. It was a very important position Burke knew. And since Michael Swenson, the boy who played it last season, had moved, the position was open. Still, Burke wasn't interested in it. I'd rather play keeper, he said. I know, Coach Davis said, but I think I'm going to go with Ryan in goal. Burke was shocked. It had been a long time since he'd cried about anything to do with sports, but he felt like it now. You'll be the backup keeper, Coach Davis continued, and you'll still play all the time because you'll be the sweeper. Burke managed to mutter something that sounded like, okay, but he was still fighting back tears. As the players left the field, he ran off ahead of the group. He changed clothes quickly and got on his bike for the short ride home. One more day of tryouts remained, but Burke already knew where he stood. On the final day of tryouts, he didn't even bring his goalkeeper gloves to the field. He practiced the entire time with the defenders. During a break, Peter ran up to Burke. What the heck are you doing? Peter asked. Why aren't you fighting for the keeper spot? Coach told me yesterday, Burke said. He couldn't bear to look at his friend. He kept his eyes fixed on the ground. I'm going to be sweeper. That stinks, Peter said. At least you'll be on the field all the time with me. Burke smiled a little. Just then, Ryan ran over for a drink of water. He walked right up to the boys. Burke cringed as he prepared for Ryan to gloat. Hey, Burke, Ryan said. You're a good keeper. I'm sorry tryouts didn't turn out the way you wanted. Burke was sure Ryan didn't mean what he said. Yeah, Burke said. Whatever. It was a good competition, Ryan said. He held out his hand to Burke. No hard feelings? Burke shook Ryan's hand for a quick second. No hard feelings, he forced out. Ryan trotted away. Competition. If you are in a competition, you are in a contest against another person or team. Let the games begin. After just a few weeks of practice, the Titans were ready to begin their season. It would be a long schedule. There were 24 league games, plus four weekend tournaments. Well, boys, we're ready for another great season, Coach Davis began. Last year, we won the state tournament. I know some things are different this year, but I think we can do it again. And we have a new opportunity this year. Whoever wins the state title this year will be invited to play in a national tournament. Now the players were pumped. They couldn't wait to get on the field. When the game began, Burke felt strange. Playing as sweeper meant moving around the field a lot and doing things that he wasn't used to doing. Still, he handled the position well, so Ryan didn't have much work at the net. The Titans controlled play for most of the game. Peter scored a goal late in the first half to give the team a 1-0 lead against their opponents, the Storm. Midway through the half, the Storm pushed the ball down into the left corner of the field. Ryan charged out of the net to challenge the forward. That left the net empty. Ryan! Burke yelled. Get back in the goal! It was too late. A Storm player hit the ball into the middle of the field. Burke couldn't get to it, and the Storm's center forward pounded the ball into the open net. Ryan dived, but couldn't reach the shot. A little help. The Storm and the Titans ended the game in a 1-1 tie. The rest of the Titans' season was a lot like that first game. Ryan made some great saves, but his poor fundamental play cost his team several goals. The Titans were scoring as many goals as they had the year before, but they were giving up a lot more. After that first game, when Ryan didn't seem to like Burke's advice, Burke stopped giving it. He did his best job as sweeper trying to protect Ryan, but he didn't offer Ryan any help in how to play goalkeeper. The Titans were barely able to make the league playoffs. After the last game of the regular season, Coach Davis took Ryan aside for a private talk. Burke couldn't hear what they were saying. When the talk was over, Coach Davis called to Burke. Burke ran up to him. Burke, I think we need to make a change, Coach Davis said. 
I'd like to put you back in goal for the playoffs. Burke wasn't sure what to say. Are you sure? Burke said. Ryan's been playing there all year. It's not working out, Coach Davis said. If we want to go to nationals, we need you in goal. It was a huge compliment, and Burke knew it. Still, he felt uneasy. Um, thanks, Coach, he finally said. As the coach walked away, Peter approached. I heard the great news, he yelled. That's awesome! Yeah, awesome, Burke mumbled. So why don't I feel better? That night at home, Burke pulled out his goalkeeper gloves. He tried them on. This time, they felt a little funny. Burke stared at the gloves, and things suddenly became clear. That night, Burke phoned Peter and asked if he could meet at the soccer field. Trust me, Burke told his friend. I have an idea. Helping out. Burke walked over to Ryan's house. He rang the doorbell and waited. He wasn't sure how Ryan would react to him coming over. After all, they weren't exactly friends. Ryan came to the door. When he saw Burke, he paused for a moment. Then he opened the door and stepped out. So, did you come over to gloat? Ryan said. Not exactly, Burke said. I have an idea. Ryan looked confused. Burke didn't worry about what he was about to say. He decided direct honesty was the only way. Look, you make better saves than I do, Burke said. But you're not a better goalkeeper than me. So you did come over to gloat, Ryan shot back. Just listen, Burke replied. If we put our skills together, we'd have an awesome goalkeeper. So that's what we need to do. Huh? Ryan said. What are you saying? Are you nuts? We need to combine our skills into one keeper, Burke said. I'll never be able to make some of the amazing saves you make because you're a better athlete than I'll ever be. But you can learn how to play goalkeeper as well as I do. It was all becoming clear to Ryan. So, you're going to help me with the fundamentals, he said. Exactly, Burke said. Throughout that weekend, Burke and Peter drilled Ryan on the fundamentals. It wasn't easy, but Ryan was starting to get it. At the next practice, Burke and Ryan approached Coach Davis together. They presented their idea and told the coach what they had already done. Coach Davis seemed pleased. I'm not sure if this will work, he said, but I'm proud of you boys for working together to solve this problem. Let's do it. Plan in action. It wasn't always smooth, but the plan worked. Burke shouted goal whenever Ryan needed to stay put and now when he needed to charge. After a few games, Burke didn't need to make the calls anymore. Ryan was figuring it out on his own. Ryan kept making spectacular saves. The Titans easily advanced through the league playoffs and the first two rounds of the state tournament. In the state championship, they again faced the Cosmos, just as they had the year before. This was it, their chance to go to nationals for the first time ever. Early in the second half, Burke intercepted a pass at the top of the penalty area. Looking ahead, he heard Peter yell, Send it! as he took off down the sideline. Burke booted the ball high down the field ahead of Peter. With his speed, Peter beat the defense and controlled the pass. He closed on the Cosmos goal and boomed a heavy shot toward the far upper corner. Intercepted If you intercepted something, you stopped it from getting where it was going. As the ball hit the webbing of the net, Burke and the rest of the Titans yelled. They were ahead. Now they only needed to protect their lead. Against the Cosmos, it wasn't going to be easy. In the final minute, the Cosmos made one last rush up the field. They moved the ball into the corner, and a Titans defender rushed to challenge. Burke moved to cover a player. But with the game on the line, the Cosmos brought more players into the zone. The Titans defenders couldn't cover them all. The Cosmos player kicked the ball toward the front of the goal. Ryan froze. Burke could tell he was trying to decide if he should run out to try to play it or if he should stay in the goal. Ryan stayed put. 
he saw the ball going toward an unguarded player near the penalty kick dot. Ryan prepared for the shot. He crouched low and kept his hands ready. When the ball bounced off the player's foot, Ryan was ahead of it. His sprawling dive met the ball perfectly, and, instead of knocking it away, Ryan caught it. He clutched it tightly as time expired. Sprawling If you move in a sprawling way, you spread out your arms and legs. The Titans were champions again. Peter and Burke rushed to their keeper. Ryan still held the ball to his chest. You did it, Burke yelled. You did it! Ryan looked him in the eye. No, we did it, Ryan said. Collaborative discussion. Respond to the text. Look back at what you wrote on before you read the text. Discuss your response with a partner. Then work with the group to discuss the questions below. Refer to details in Soccer Shootout and take notes for your responses.